All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Pokemon. I've got a really fun one for you guys today, a longer one. An entire booster box of Tops Series 2. These generally go for $1,000 or more. I think I actually got this, an offer accepted for $800. So I got a pretty good deal on this. I'm curious to see what the condition of the cards are inside. Sometimes with the booster boxes, you run into this issue um, where the packs... They tend to, uh, depending on how they're stored, sometimes the cards inside are really stuck together, and that can really damage the cards. And we've opened a lot of tins. You guys have seen me open a lot of tins on the channel, and the tins don't seem to have that problem as frequently. But the, the boxes, you're running a little bit more of a risk, because if you buy one tin and you pay, what, like 200 bucks, you're out 200 bucks if every pack is you know stored improperly or whatever. But if you buy a whole box and the whole box is like that because they didn't store it correctly, you're kind of screwed because these are pretty expensive boxes. So I actually have taken a big loss on a box before. I bought a box of Top Series 1, and it was totally misstored. And every single pack, the cards were so stuck together that every time I pulled a hollow, it completely ripped the face of the hollow off. These, This box looks really mint, actually, and it looks like it's in really good shape. So hopefully that's a good sign. The main chase for me out of here is the Charizard clear cut card. There's uh, these insert cards. Top Series 2 is the first set where they started doing inserts. And I believe it's also the first set they started doing episode cards. I guess after Series 1, they figured they needed to spice things up a little bit. So you can get stickers in these packs. You can get these episode cards. Ooh, and these do feel a little stuck together. Not bad, but not great. And you can also get these insert, uh, like, die cut things. So I'll show you guys what we're talking about here. Because I think, oh, they're not bad. Wheezing, Bye Bye Butterfree, Rapidash, and our Hollow. Oh, it is stuck. It's a Magneton. Oh, man. Not too bad, but you can see when it comes off there, it gets a little bit of surface damage. Which isn't as big of a concern, because like I said, my main chase in here is that those insert cards. So as long as those aren't stuck, I'm not really planning on grading any of these hollows. Unless we got like a Gengar or something like that. A really big like fan favorite card would be really all I'd be worried about. But we'll see. Hopefully, they're not too bad. I've definitely had uh, some pretty bad boxes compared to this. All right. And generally, like, those insert cards don't stick together as much because they're, like, a different texture. So we got Hitmonlee, Kingler, Abra the Psychic Showdown, Execute, Battle Aboard the St. Anne, The Path of the Pokemon League, Arihorn, and Bulbasaur in the Hidden Village. That is our hollow. Unfortunately, it does seem like it's always the hollow that gets stuck. Let me go ahead and get all these packs out of this box. This box is actually in really good shape. I might hold on to it. Keep it as a display box. I mean, this thing is like in perfect shape. Put it back there. But I think it's because the way, it doesn't really matter, you know, because it's a box, I think the packs, there's more weight on the packs because they're stacked so deep. And I think that weight, regardless of how they're stored, is going to make it more likely that they could be stuck together because there's more pressure on the packs themselves, which makes sense. So that's why some people don't like the tins because they're rattling around. The packs are a little bit more in the tins, but because of that, they don't run as much risk of being stuck together because they're a little bit more loose, not as pressurized. Look at Tongue, Chansey, and Episode One, Pokemon I Choose You, Pikachu I Choose You. Oh no, it does. It is just I Choose You. And I find that these episode cards are slight. They're like a slightly different texture, and it seems like they stick more than the character card hollows. 
полосы. All right. These feel like a nice brick of cards. Todd, Slowbro, Electric Shock Showdown. Got a Krabby, Ghost of the Maiden Peak, Hitmonchan. These all three are stuck. A Drowsy, those are hollow. And it looks like we got a sticker card here. War Turtle sticker. So that's one of the insert cards. Let me get out some more penny savers here. Oh, these are like a weird texture. These are like the free ones. Actually, they don't, they, they might not be big enough. These are the ones that came with, uh, they came free with some top loaders that I bought. Oh, they're big enough. It was like some deal they had on Amazon. You bought, I think, 200 top loaders and you got 100 free penny sleeves. Well, that was a pretty good price. Most of these hollows are just going to be binder cards anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. Like I said, I wasn't really... Because this isn't Series 1, I'm not really looking to grade any of the hollows. Like series one, probably mostly what I'm looking at grading is the hollow character cards of the starters. And because there's no starters in here, I'm not as interested in grading them. Clefairy and the Moonstone, Voltorb, and a Bye Bye Butterfree. So far, no uh, die cut or clear cards yet. Hopefully they don't end up being too stuck together if we do find some in here. There, I've seen a bunch of different tricks, and I tried these with the uh, with the box that I got screwed on. Some people say that you can put them in the freezer. Some people say take a hair dryer to them um, and warm them up. Different people have different techniques where they say it'll unstick the cards a little bit. Let me just go ahead and try to... The Tower of Terror. I don't really see that much surface damage on these when I'm doing that. Where's the top of the sleeve, man? There you go. Now, was there an insert in here, I guess is the question. A Voltorb, Team Rocket Cassidy, Team Rocket James, and a Dodrio, so no insert there. Was a weird way of opening this pack. Okay, took the long way on that one. Onyx is stuck to our Doduo here. Yeah, see, it's just a little bit of surface damage every time you do that. They were definitely a lot, a lot cleaner hollows in the uh, in the tins. That's for sure. Shelter, Series 2 Checklist, Pokemon Shipwreck, we got a Hypno, and a Coughing, still no insert cards in there, alright, so you got a Gengar right on front, Bulbasaur in the Hidden Village, Magneton, and a Rhydon, here comes the Squirtle Squad, Haunter, looks like we've got three cards in here, I think one is a sticker, Ghastly, see it seems like it gets the edges, that's where it really kind of gets them. But I think we had a sticker there. That's why three were stuck. We'll see what it is. Just my luck, it'll be the Charmander. I think it might be. And 
Of course, it is the Charmander. But it doesn't look too bad. I think most of the transfer came off the other. Let me compare it to the other one I've got. Eh, it might still be salvageable. We'll see. I'll probably still send it in for grading, to be honest. These tops cards can be a nightmare, though, to grade. Depending on how much surface damage they get, they can get really, really low grades packed fresh. Which is unfortunate, but... What can you do? I've definitely seen a lot worse in terms of these cards sticking together, so I'm not super upset. But that is what I was afraid of with this. Electrode, Ponyta, and that is the risk you take buying a whole box. Dugong. Which is funny because it's it's actually more cost effective to just buy the tins. Most most of the time, I'll submit offers and they'll accept offers around two hundred dollars a tin, which two hundred dollars for seven packs is a lot cheaper than a thousand dollars for thirty six packs. So I got a series two hollow. Team Rocket Jesse, Haunter versus Kadabra, Cedra, Horsey, got a Grimer, Ash catches a Pokemon, a Seal, and a Marowak. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's the edges that get it the worst. But it's no big deal. Like I said, the die cut cards should just fall right out. They generally don't stick together because they're a different texture. I think we might have something here. Todd. Lick a tongue. Lick a tongue is stuck to a chancy. I would love to get a chancy hollow. The ghost of Maiden Peak. We did get a die cut here, die cut Alakazam, and look how stuck that is. And that did a little damage to our uh, our buddy Execute here. But that's okay. These cards are super difficult to grade because of all those corners. But it does make it a little bit interesting to have a little bit of variety, which I guess was the intention behind having these insert cards. Had to spice it up a little bit from Series 1, which is understandable. All right, Kingler. Psychic Showdown. Execute. We got a Rhyhorn. The School of Hard Knocks. Followed by Cubone and a Chansey. And a Path to the Pokemon League. Which seems to be a pretty common hollow. I got one of these in almost every tin. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below what has your experience been with buying vintage Pokemon tops. If you had better luck as far as them being stuck together, getting them out of tins, getting them out of booster boxes, I think my theory about the... Ooh, see what I mean? Oh, but it's still stuck, man. Oh, 
I don't know. See, I guess it does do some damage to even the clear cut card. So this is what the clear cut card looks like. It's a Mewtwo. And that is annoying. I was hoping it wouldn't stick to the clear cut card the same way. It is doing a little bit of damage to each one. But I think it's just taking off of the hollow. I still don't think it's taking from the actual hit. I guess we'll see. But you guys will have to let me know in the comments below what your experience has been. Booster boxes versus tins. The tins seem to be a lot better. And I'm curious to see when I do get this Series 1 booster box if we have the same issue. But I do think the theory of the weight of the packs makes a lot of sense. Because they're just more compressed and there's more force holding them together. Oh, we got another die cut card. A vile plume. Stuck to a magnemite. Yeah, these definitely get some surface damage on them when you do that. But what can you do? I'll probably start doing that to make this go by a little faster, just getting straight to the last two cards. But you guys have pretty much seen almost every card now. We'll keep going through some packs. So these, I think there's a sticker in here. The Rattata sticker and a Tangela. That did some damage to the bottom there for sure. That's unfortunate. See, I just opened up a um, movie edition tops box and it wasn't bad at all. I don't think any of them stuck together. So I guess it's kind of hit or miss. And again, there is no uh, Charizard in here that's a character card, so you're not really missing much by skipping some of these uh, filler cards if you don't go through every pack all the way. You're not going to miss anything super exciting. Go ahead and skip to our last two cards. Clefairy and the Moonstone is our hollow. And I don't know if this is like an insert card or what, but you don't get the Ash Ketchum card very often, it seems. Now, I have had some packs that have had double the hollows. Because Tops is weird like that sometimes. But I don't think we're going to have any such luck today. Kangaskhan. Marowak. Oh, we got a Bulbasaur insert card. That one didn't, that didn't seem like it came off too, too bad. So we might have some luck if we do get a Charizard out of here. Because that didn't seem like it stuck. Oh, there's that shit at the top there. It looks like it came off there. We'll see. We'll see what they do with PSA with these. Executor. It'll be an interesting PSA submission, that's for sure. So make sure you guys subscribe if you want to uh, see how some of these cards grade. Every card that I pulled from these top series, or every hit, I should say, will be in that grading submission so you can see. And we know which ones came from tins and which ones came from boxes, so we'll see which ones grade better. I'm very interested to see how that goes. So make sure you subscribe for that. And then also check out the link to the eBay in the description box below. 
some of these slabs, once they're graded, will be listed there, depending on whether they're duplicates or not. And some of the lower grade ones, I'm sure, will be there. Ooh, yeah, that did a lot of damage on that. And, of course, I think that was another Charmander. Look at that whole edge there. It's a shame. It was. Poor little Charmander. I'll probably send him anyway, to be honest. Add him to my slab collection, even if it's a probably a pretty low grade. Poor Charmander. Oh well. And seal, you can see that's where the main damage was. See, it wasn't as bad as the other one, though. Looks like we've got an Ash Ketchum as our hollow. That didn't come off too bad. It just seems like the edges are what get kind of screwed on these. Bye bye Butterfree. Ghastly. Oh, there we go. Stray Pokemon. I like to grade these if the corners look good. Anything Charizard is, or Charmander, it's fun for me to grade. I might do a giveaway too of some of these slabs. I'm sure there will be some inadvertently very low grades. It might be fun to do a giveaway with those rather than sell them for a loss because I'm sure some of the really low grades probably won't even be worth $15. Sometimes when you're grading top, stuff comes back extremely, extremely low. All right, what do we have here? The Mystery at the Lighthouse is our hollow. Okay. At least we'll have a pretty, pretty substantial tops collection by the time we're done with this. Pretty complete. I gotta say though, it is brutal when you get to that last card and it just you just hear that rip. The Rhyhorn came out pretty good. Rhydon, I should say. That is a heartbreaking sound. <laughs> is that that rip at the very end? No Gengars yet, no Chanseys. Some hollows that I'd like to get. I'd also like to get a stray Pokemon hollow. Krabby, looking a little janky. Far fetched. Make sure there's nothing in here. Okay, so Krabby is our hit. The edges on these do look kind of rough. I wonder if they had these issues early on when Topps was first released with them being stuck together or if it was just something that only happened after 20 years of these cards sitting around. Or I wonder if it was like this right off the bat where these cards stuck together just because of the way they're printed. I choose you. Coughing. Onyx. Here comes the Squirtle Squad. Haunter. And they battle aboard the St. Anne. That one actually came out decent. It's just these, the borders. The borders, man. For whatever reason, the borders just don't seem to uh, stick very well. Or they stick too well, I guess you could say. That's all right. 
You have to let me know what your favorite chase card or what your chase card was from Series 2 or what your favorite card is in general from Series 2 and which top set you guys like the best. It'll be interesting to read through some of those comments. All right. So it looks like our hollow is a Voltorb. And of course there's a sticker card, so that's probably gonna be stuck bad to this Hypno. Oh, Jigglypuff, how cute. How adorable, man. Adorable Jigglypuff. Maybe when this is done, I'll show you some of the cards that I'm gonna send off to get graded. Or maybe I should do that in its own video. I've been saying I want to do that, do a submission video like before I send it and then after I send it to so show you guys exactly what I'm sending. Then it, there will be a follow-up video once it comes back of what it actually ended up being. So it looks like we did get a die. Ah, see, it still gets that edge damage, man, it's on the Squirtle. It's unfortunate. Still no Charizard, though. I don't know if we'll grade him or not. We'll put him in a card saver. Might be a good gift for Zach for Christmas. Let's see, do we have anything else in here? Doesn't look like it. Oh, wait. Wrong stack. This goes in that stack. goes in that stack. All right. The Ghost of Maiden Peak was our hollow. Got a slow bro there. Shelter. Series 2 checklist. Okay. Nothing crazy in that one. Let's go over some of these. All right, we're getting low on this second half of the box here. So our hollow is a Team Rocket Cassidy. Didn't come out too bad. I will be disappointed, man, if we don't even get the Charizard out of here. And this box might turn out to not be a great investment, especially with some of these cards damaged and not really gradable. Team Rocket James, the Water Flowers of Cerulean City, Slowpoke. And let's just skip Haunter versus Kadabra. Man, we gotta get that Charizard out of here. If we can get that, it comes out clean enough to come back at 10. That would at least be some substantial value back. I think that's like a $500 card in a 10. We'll see what we can do though. What do we have here? Die cut Caterpie and a Haunter. I mean, look at the corner, look at the spikes on that. I mean, that's gonna, that's very tough to grade, something like that. There's too many ways for it to uh, 
get whitened and damaged and chipped. Looks like we got a hollow dugong out of there. And it doesn't look like anything else super noteworthy. A very flashy hollow on that dugong. All right. Tentacruel and Tentacool. Doesn't look like we got anything super noteworthy in there either. We're getting down to the last few packs here, guys. Find out if we get something worth our money out of here or not. Showdown at Peter City, Ghastly, Primate Goes Bananas, Rhyhorn, Hard Knocks, Cubone. Got a slow poke in there. And of course, at least the sticker that we're getting the most of is the Charmander. But it does seem like that's the card that's been the most stuck out of all of them. So I'm not too mad at that. Maybe that's just how the edge is. That edge is the, nah, I don't know. I do love this card though. It's one of my favorite Charmander artworks. I've gotten what, three of those out of this box? <laughs> yeah. I wish some of them were in better shape because that would have, if these had not been so sticky, that would give me a pretty good shot at a 10. That is the only sticker I really want out of here anyway. So that's kind of my consolation prize, I guess. Okay, so we got another die cut card. Pikachu stuck to a muck. Looks like that's got some damage on it, of course. All right. And Muck is our hollow. We got, what, three packs left, guys. Three more shots at a Charizard. We'll see how this goes. So far, though, I'm definitely glad I didn't buy one of the more expensive versions of this box that was like $1,500 because then we'd really be out big time value-wise. Pokemon Sensation. I haven't seen any more of those stray Pokemon episode cards. Maybe one of these Charmanders will sneak by if they're grading my cards fast enough and they'll give me a 10. Who knows? Second to last pack, guys. Let's just rip off the Band-Aid here. Shelter. Oh, and our buddy. I don't really see any damage. We'll try it. And grade a few of these just for fun. And make sure there wasn't anything else in there. Nope. All right, guys. Last pack. What are the odds we get a Charizard out of the last pack? Probably slim to none, right? Let's see. Looks like we got a coughing as our hollow. 
Ooh, we don't even have an insert on the last pack. No stray Pokemon. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the box. Our last hollow is a... Oh, it's a Weezing. My bad. They look so similar. A Weezing hollow. Let's go through the hits here again. So these are probably the ones I'm going to consider grading. As you can tell, I'm a Charmander fan. The Mewtwo is probably the biggest hit, but that one was pretty substantially damaged. But yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Tops content. There will be plenty more just like this. And as always, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Pokemon, signing out.